there was a second match taking place on the second match day between Haiti and Mexico. And Haiti went out there and not only did they take care of the business in front of them, they absolutely put Mexico to sleep. It just, they went out there and they not only just picked up the win, but they picked it up emphatically. Like it was just so impressive in the way they did this. I, I am loving this for Haiti. Heartbroken for Mexico, of course, but watching this team play tonight and seeing the difference between that match day one and the evolution into match day two, love it. Love to see a team get stronger through a tournament. And that's what Haiti did against Mexico. That's it, exactly what they did. It was um, pretty crazy to see. And, and watching this Haiti side, uh, they were my dark horse coming into this tournament. Um, watching them throughout the CONCACAF W qualifiers and seeing them scores goal after goal after goal 44 goals in that qualifier zero goals against they had um the veteran leadership of rose lord Borgea. they had so many young players right their entire roster is just incredibly young i think they averaged the age of 21 total on the roster and um that fight that they have is just truly incredible even watching going back to that first match the united states played against haiti haiti put up a fight right they they had a pk that went off the post they had another opportunity that just skimmed wide they had a a great breakaway opportunity that casey murphy saved and tonight against mexico this haiti side they came out and, and fighting swinging with everything they had rose lord Borgea had another opportunity from the spot and she was not missing this one i mean uh, we have to look a little bit at this team, this game, and how it happened uh, between Mexico and Haiti because yeah, for sure, was coming good. away with three goals and three goals all off of set pieces. Two of them penalty kicks, one of them a free kick opportunity, but uh, ultimately um, getting the win and it it becoming a choppy game towards the end of it. But I think Haiti did so well to capitalize on the opportunities that they were given, whether it was the the PK coming early in this match or um, another PK coming later. And despite Mexico controlling a lot of the possession, especially throughout the first 45 minutes of this match. Yeah, I think it was evident uh, for me. I mean, just, you know, as someone who's followed the Mexican women's national team for a very long time, uh, I could just sort of see like in the opening five minutes of this game that it just had another layer of familiarity around it, similar to what we saw with Mexico going up against Jamaica just was off. Some mm -hmm. didn't feel right. And sure enough, we just saw the wheels fall off as this game continued to progress. I mean, everything that you could think of to go wrong within your game plan, if you're Mexico, yeah. went wrong in this game. You're talking about not just one penalty kick, you know, conceded, uh, but two in this game. It's It's tough enough of a night if you're giving one up. But two, that's that's really, really tough to come back from. And it, and the timing in which these happen, too, I think are also very telling within this game. You're talking about in the opening 15 minutes uh, to start this game and then just past the hour mark when you're coming out of the second half and the game is still somewhat manageable at this point. You're talking a 1-0 score, you yeah. know, and you're looking to try to play your way into the game or get something back in some type of way. So... You know, I love I, again. I love this for Haiti because we we talk about this tournament as a whole on attacking third. Yes, we we do the the previews and the recaps for USWNT, but we've been talking about all the teams here. I mean, choosing Lisa going with Haiti as a dark horse, me yeah. going looking with Mexico and saying they've got the pressure on them. They've got everything to to prove in this one, and that was something that I was keeping an eye on. Quite mm -hmm. frankly, when it came to this team in this tournament they absolutely had all the pressure on them going into this one so there's going to be a lot I think that comes out of around this team where naturally the finger is going to be looked at at the coach people are going to be asking a lot of Monica Vergara and, and her team and quite frankly their preparations their tactics or lack thereof within this tournament and what that means for them um Sure. Uh, are they technically eliminated from 
qualifying for the World Cup? No, they're not technically eliminated. Is it going to take literal miracles yeah. for for them to find a path through to the World Cup? Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you if you're someone who's even just a neutral uh, watching this uh, this competition, or if you're someone who is uh, vested in the the Mexicans, you know, into Mexican soccer. I don't know if you are on either side of that spectrum and look at this scenario for Mexico and say, okay, so you lost against Jamaica, you lost against Haiti. That's okay. There's still one more left. You just got to beat the United States women's national team by a plethora of gold and you need a different result in this other game. I don't know if you just sort of like you echo a that. Lot. Like, it's just like it's the chillest, most easiest day at work. That is a very difficult day at work. That is going to be the hardest day at work for this Mexican women's national team. And they just had two losses in this tournament as host. So they're sitting at the bottom of the table right now. If you're watching us live on YouTube, you could see the standings here. You've got USA clinching their, their world cup spot with six points. Haiti jumped in the standings of this, of this group a into second place with three points and their win over Mexico and Jamaica has because fallen of that goal third. differential, right? So it comes down to massive goal differential. And for Haiti getting three over Mexico uh, was huge because the United States only got three over Haiti. So their goal differential coming into this now is, is zero. So that was huge, whether that was a game plan or not uh, for Haiti, just get three, just get three. Um, it, it worked out in their favor because uh, three goals. They had another one that was called back after a bit of VAR review in this match against Mexico. Um, it could have been four, four nil over Mexico. Yeah, that's the other side of it too. Is yeah. that the, it's it's you look at like I said, we're looking at the the goals that occurred, the timing in which they occurred, and the truth is is that the scoreline actually could have been much bigger. Uh, you know, and, and again, just everything that you could think to go wrong within this match going wrong. I mean, the devastating injury oh, that took gosh. place to Rebecca Bernal. Um, hopefully she's, you know, continues to, to heal back from that. We saw a report that it was a, something around the clavicle. So hopefully that is what it is. And she continues to, you know, have a successful rehab with that. Um, but a player off one of your starting center backs off, you lose your next starting center back in Greta Espinosa. Uh, to a red card, to a red card, you know, bad foul. And this is, this is defender. also where we see VAR coming in again. Yeah. I, I just mentioned how Haiti had a goal called back due to a, a VAR call and a handball. This one initially a yellow card and upon further review using VAR, it's determined that she was the last player back. And it, because of that, it's a red card. Yeah. And before you know it in the span of, five minutes Mexico has lost both of their starting center backs um yeah truly really devastating right as you said everything that could go wrong for this Mexican side really did and honestly anything that could go right for the Haiti side it, it did they, they were able to draw two penalty kicks draw another set piece outside of the box because um it, right without those set pieces and, and without those stoppages of plays with the two PKs and, and the free kick would Haiti have gotten on the board and would they have scored Probably not uh, because they, they weren't able to do it in the run of play, yet they were able to capitalize on these opportunities that they were given to them. And uh, man, he can score some cool goals. Oh my gosh. I mean, but you're talking like we're talking about this game. We're talking about these moments of quite frankly, disaster for Mexico, but we had this moment here with this red card and it leads to this. Uh, it was a moment of beauty, quite frankly. I, I mean that in all sincerity, I loved this free kick goal that took place just after the foul from Espinosa. Judy standing behind the ball and just we see her take this and it just the way it, it just sort of it, it had like on angel's wings it flew into the back of the net. It was it was wonderful to see and I loved the goal celebration after it as well. It was the confidence, the celebration that's that's part of why I love CONCACAF so much. Yeah. It's like are there obvious like emotional vested ties in that? Like if, if people have ties or feel some type of way about rooting for the United States women's national team or folks who are, who root for, for Mexico. I mean, there's, there's 
there's a different energy around this side of the game, around this Absolutely. side of the ball. I think when we're watching these types of tournaments, uh, the different energy is that you want to have success for as many programs as possible. And what I think we're witnessing right now with Haiti is very special. We're talking about opening up this episode with like with like long journeys to these types of moments. And Haiti has been on this journey for quite some time. And these are young, young players who have been playing together for a very long time. And it's great to watch them see this success out on the pitch during this tournament. It, it truly is. And, and you mentioned they're so young, but they are so incredibly talented. I mean, the third goal coming for Haiti in the 78th minute, and it's Jundi. Just an incredible set piece, like the the technicality, the skill, the curl on the ball to find the back of the net, and and the perseverance throughout the entire ninety minutes of this match to fight, to crawl, and and scratch, and stay in this game, and go up early, and then keep that lead and keep a shutout. It was really impressive to see and watch Haiti, even against the United States, right? Like it, it was such an impressive side to watch, and. This is huge for Haiti moving forward, for the nation, for CONCACAF as a whole. Um, there is a lot that can happen now for Haiti because Monday, it all comes down between Haiti and Jamaica. Monday is the day, and yep. you better believe that Haiti is going to sleep with huge smiles on their face. I saw a tweet out. I think it was Steph Yang. I'm not entirely sure. I forget. Uh, but she was in Monterey and hearing from the locker rooms just down the hall from the press box. Cheers, screams, singing, dancing. And it's got to be the Haitians dancing and celebrating because this is huge. Not only did uh, they held on against the United States, only letting up three goals, which it, that's a pretty big deal for Haiti as well. And then to get three over Mexico, be number two in the standings, and it all comes down to Monday. Um, they can clinch with a tie or and a I, win. I love that. I love, I that, love that too. The look, Haiti came out here. They completely flipped this entire tournament. Yeah on its head with this win tonight 100 percent, 100 percent. i'm so Every happy time. for the united oh. states but i'm so happy for haiti like i am so happy like, for haiti and like, i'm is so this excited. episode really us reacting to the united states are we reacting to haiti i don't know maybe it's a little bit of both but they did it's it's so cool. the narratives around this tournament heading into this competition was that the final match day was probably going to be like this big down to the wire Mexico versus United States. And guess what? It ain't happening. That ain't it. That's not what's going down. It's Haiti and Jamaica. It's going to okay. come down to that. There's going to be all eyes on that. People are going to be seeing what's going on and who's going to come out on top on that one to clinch that top number two spot. It's, it's so it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. So I, I'm very, very excited for that. Congratulations once again in order for the United States women's national team 